Totally cool. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks so much. You're really good. You know, if I took this off, we could be twins. Oh, twins? Yeah, yeah. But I'm gonna keep it on. Yeah. I'll well, upstage you. How did Karen pitch you guys? Um, you know, jumping into the show, it's, it's kind of my concept, but you guys are not unfamiliar with my concept ideas already. So what yeah. was the idea that sounded like it was an interesting thing? Rock, paper, scissors to see what goes on. Best out of three or one? Just one. Okay, right. Okay, I'm ready. shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, so, well, for me, it was like, I actually had uh, Kevin and I are buddies, so he told me about it. Um, and I thought it was a really intriguing concept. Then I saw the original teaser trailer for the original format show that it's based on. I thought it looked really great. And then I read the script for fun. Uh, just had my agent send it to me. And I you know, texted him and said, I love the script. And then the next thing I know, he's like, oh. A month later, he's like, do you have any interest in playing <laughs> the druggie? I'm like, yes, I do. Yeah, so that's how it happened. Um, for me, I had not uh, worked with Kevin before. So the script was sent to me uh, by my agents and said, look, look how amazing this is. And, you know, Kevin wrote it and I read it and I really, really fell in love with it. And the character uh, was a very exciting character to me. So the script really sold itself. I read Kevin's work and was like, I, I would love to be a part of this. And then I had the opportunity to sit down and meet with Kevin. Um, and uh, it's just been a joy to come board, come aboard this with this cast and with this creator, and um, and make the show. Yeah. What really interested you about the characters that you're going to take on in this show? You go first. Yeah, and then we will be like, we'll yeah. do it. Then. Yeah. Um, so as, as, as opposed to pretending like we're polite and then looking yeah. at each other. <laughs> um, so I, my character Jordan, when you first meet him, is very. Um, affable, things are going well for him in life, he's a very kind man, um, and when you see him at the end of the series, he's the complete inverse of that, because tragedy befalls him. And for me, that was exciting. I, I don't always get the opportunity to play the dark, screwed up guy, and I love the idea that I get to play that in the show, so it's been very exciting, and that's for that reason I'm excited about the character. Yeah, similar to James, I I, know, I don't really get the opportunity to play the dark guy, uh, and I I I actually think every character in this uh, series has some darkness in them, um, which is very appealing. It's always um well I was you know I, I was like you when you were on your show that uh, on CBS you were playing yeah, like the lead yeah, hero, yeah, right? Yeah. I had a similar thing. I was like the hero in the story, and I and I it was, it's nice to be the the fuck up. You know, it's nice to be the guy who's who's making mistakes for once. Your character is. is are you, how does that interact with the fairy tale side of the show? Well, the three little piggies are. Uh, I play one of the three little piggies, okay. and the three pigs. Uh, the third one is actually the only one who is uh, outsmarts the, the, the big bad wolf, and I'm not one of the third ones. So, you know, we all have our flaws, and, and one of my, one of the, the, the lore of the, the folklore of the three little pigs is that they all kind of, um, they want the easy way out. And my character, he's always trying to escape. He wants something quick, whether it's a quick jewelry heist, or whether it's a quick fix on narcotics to make himself feel better. He doesn't want to ever work hard in order to actually build a house that's made of stones. That's... What's the most exciting thing that uh, happened on the set? What's the most exciting thing about the series that you like working on? The most exciting thing about the series? Um, well, I, there's so many ways to like answer that question. I think for fans, the exciting thing about the series would be there's three very distinct storylines. Yeah. And so... I think that will provide a lot of entertainment and keep the episodes really fresh because you're jumping from story to story in each episode. And so like your A, B, and C storylines are really independent. And I think that's a very cool thing. Um, and I, I, you don't often see that in, on a show. So I think that's really fresh and, and new concept. Yeah, I also like how just we know inherently, obviously, that it's, there's three fairy tales. There's um, Hansel and Gretel, uh, Little Red Riding Hood, and Real Big. So I like, even as a reader, 
when I was reading the script, I liked seeing the little sprinkles of the folklore in the modern day. So you kind of can pick up, oh yeah, that that's something that Little Red Riding Hood did, or etc. And I, I like that. Right. Like in our show, Little Red Riding Hood, uh, played by by Daniel Campbell, she uh, she's Little Red Riding Hood, but the way that she falls off the path is she kind of falls into partying and sneaking out of the house. And so that's Little Red Riding Hood strength from the path. So it's just taking that uh, and really making that analogy run. You said there's like three main storylines. Or do you have like one big bad guy that kind of ties them all together? They all interweave. Each story has, I think, its own villain. Yeah. Um, which is also funny because I don't think the, the show is quite that cut and dry where there's villains and heroes. Like everyone, it, it constantly is yeah. inverting throughout. I think yeah. the audience will be surprised who they're rooting for in every yeah, story. Yeah, because you have some like, like really morally questionable. Even though yeah. like initially you're the victim, you have then morally questionable choices towards the end. But you started actually going off the rails. I think it's a great arc. I think it's going to be interesting. I think because Paul and I are the same storyline, there there will be people who are rooting against maybe Paul at first and then rooting for him and rooting for me and then rooting against me our characters um, because it's really uh, it's really like it's not that black and white who's doing good and who's doing bad which is cool I think that'll make people continue to talk about the show and question what's happening you guys have worked on broadcast shows CBS Apple Access allows you to kind of be away from the standards necessarily of broadcast TV. Is Kevin able to amp up the show and are you able to do more adult kind of themes since this is a, a darker tinge show? Is it feel more of like almost like you guys are getting a chance to play in almost like a premium table or like you know, FX type territory where you can play around the story and, and just be adult? Yeah, I mean I also feel like I was able to improv and use like slang and, and say things that maybe I would say as an adult that I would never say on, say, you know, NBC or, or CW. And so it's nice I was able to just riff. You know? Yeah, it feels like we're playing in the premium streaming space. I think you can almost put those two things together now, right? Yeah, right, premium exactly. and streaming. Yeah. And I think CBS All Access is part of that party. Um, and for us, it's, it's, it's definitely a party because it's fun to be able to not feel at all regulated by certain things. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Great questions.